Okay, in this lesson, you're going to find the resultant speed and direction of the airplane. The problem states an airplane is traveling at a speed of 500 miles per hour with a bearing of 330 degrees at a fixed altitude with a negligible wind velocity. When the airplane reaches a certain point, it encounters a wind with a velocity of 70 miles per hour in the direction north 45 degrees east. What are the resultant speed and direction of the airplane? So, um, to get us started, let's recall that a bearing, they're measured in degrees mm, clockwise. And you have to measure them from the north. So when they say 330 degrees, so this is north, east, south, and west. Wherever north is, that's going to be 0 degrees. And then when you get to east, that's 90 degrees. And south is 180 degrees. And then west is 270 degrees. So when they're saying 330 degrees, you're going this way, past west, and a little bit here. That's 330 degrees. But that is not our direction angle. Our direction angle is the one that measures from the positive x axis to the angle. So the red one is your direction angle. Well, how do we figure it out? Well, this from the first quadrant is 90 degrees. So how much more do you need? Well, this side is 60 degrees. So therefore, the leftover side should be 30 degrees. So your direction angle is taking 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 30 degrees and that should give you 120 degrees. So V1 is going to be our velocity for the airplane. It says it was 500 miles per hour. Whenever you see miles per hour, that's going to be your magnitude. So this is 500 miles per hour, your magnitude. And we have to find the velocity of the airplane. So remember the formula, it goes um, magnitude of V. And you're going to multiply by cosine of theta and sine of theta. Remember theta here is your direction angle. What is the magnitude of V, the airplane? It was 500. Cosine, what is your direction angle? Meaning from here to there should be about 120 degrees. So it's going to be cosine of 120 degrees times sine of 120 degrees. I'm going to let you verify here. This is going to be 500 times negative 1 half, square root of 3 over 2, or go ahead and simplify that. You get negative 250 and negative 250 square root of 3. Okay, next. You need to find the velocity of the wind. The wind is going 70 miles per hour in the direction north 45 degrees east. So since it's only 70, I'm going to draw a smaller arrow here. And we know that, let's say this is north, this is east. And the direction was, the bearing was north 45 degrees east. So from here to here was 45 degrees. That means this is also 45 degrees. That means your direction angle is 45 degrees. It's the one that's measured from the positive x-axis. So same thing. You're going to take the magnitude of that wind vector. I'm going to go ahead and call that V2 here, which is the wind. And what is the magnitude of the wind? It was 
70. So you're going to take 70 and then cosine of 45 degrees and then sine of 45 degrees. This should give you 70 square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 again. That's going to give you 35 square root of 2 and 35 square root of 2. Okay, how do we find the resultant vector? Well, you need to add the two vectors together. So, you can go ahead and draw a parallelogram. And the diagonal of that parallelogram is your resultant vector. The red one. So, algebraically, all you have to do is add V1 and V2 together. V1 was negative 250 and 250 square root of 3. V2 was the wind. That would be, whoops. Uh, 35 square root of 2 and 35 square root of 2. You can go ahead and put this in the calculator and give yourself a decimal answer. That's going to give you two, negative 200.5 and 482.5. That is your resultant vector after um, adding the velocity of the airplane and the velocity of the wind. Now, how do you find the speed? Well, speed is a scalar, so you're just going to take the square root Take your negative 200.5, square it, and then plus 482.5, and square it. That's going to give you 522.5, what's your units? Miles per hour. I'm going to draw the resultant speed on a separate graph here. So here's your north east axis. And this one is your resultant speed. And we go ahead and call that W. So here we have to find the direction angle. Remember that the direction angle is the one that measures from the positive x axis. This has an X component and a Y component. So tangent theta is going to be equal to the Y component over the X component. And your vector was negative 200.5 and 482.5. That makes the 482.5 your y component and the negative 200.5 your x component. If you simplify that, you should get around 2.4065. So tangent of theta is equal to negative 2.4065. How do you find theta? Remember that that theta that you found is not actually going to be your direction angle. It's actually going to be the angle that's that one right there. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Well, to find theta, you have to do arctan. And I'm going to go ahead and use an absolute value bar here because I don't care whether it's positive or negative. I just care about what angle it'll give me. So that's going to give you 67.435. That means that that angle over here is 67.435 degrees. 
that's not the direction angle that we want. How do we find it? Well, it forms a linear pair, so you just have to take, I'm going to say direction angle. You're going to take 180 degrees, subtract 67.4, I'll just round it to 67.4, and that should give you 112.4. 6 degrees